This episode of ASAP Frontline is supported by locumstory.com. That's locumstory.com. Ryan Stanton here with ASAP Frontline. Uh, today, ASAP 17. Um, got a couple of physicians here. Uh, hijacked another chair from the wellness section. Thank goodness they're off for GI rounds, and hopefully we'll have a return before they ever notice and, and raise, rise up against us. Uh, but I've got uh, Dr. Gokhale and uh, Dr. Patel with us. This is actually the second round because I spent special effort at pronouncing Dr. Gokhale's name, and then we got started, and I just completely went phonics works for me, and uh, pronounced it Gokhale because it's G O K H A L E, but it's Gokhale, and I screwed it up. So this is the second attempt, and um, you know, with all. With all due respect, we gotta we gotta put the we gotta put it out there that we made that I made a mistake and jacked up your name and and apologize for doing that. But our topic for today is going to be locums. It's a growing area of medicine. We all get calls. In fact, I've gotten two calls today about um, opportunities that are available. It's a growing. Um, the aspect of emergency medicine with the American College of Emergency Physicians. We have a lot of doctors that prefer to do uh, locum types, uh, behaviors and practices and travels and those sort of things. And we want to talk about it. The pluses, the minuses, how you do it, what are some things to look out for and stuff like that. So gentlemen, let's start off first by uh, getting a little background on you, uh, where you hail from and uh, that sort of nonsense. Yeah. All right. My name is Mandar Gokhale. I am originally from the East Coast. Um, I trained, uh, I went to med school at NYU. I trained at GW. um, And I live in Pasadena, California now. I practiced in a group, a pretty uh, stable group for about 16 years. And uh, I was doing locums straight out of training. But I decided to, over the past two and a half years, do it exclusively. Um, so uh, I work in the middle of the country. I work in mainly in Wyoming. I work in Montana, and I hold about five or six state uh, licenses. And I love doing it exclusively. I like to say that locums and full time it, it doesn't really mix. I, I think there's no such thing as full time locums. I like to use the phrase exclusive locums because it's everything about what we do uh, in the world of emergency medicine is anti full time. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's kind of nice to have, have a kind of a part time job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my name is Rip, Dr. Patel. Um, I'm from Houston. Go Astros. Go Astros. I went to medical school at UT Southwestern in Dallas. Uh, and then I did a year Well, I started in general surgery and I, uh, Saw the light, and I switched to emergency medicine. I trained in Philadelphia um, uh, at Jefferson. Um, and now I live in Houston. Uh, I'm faculty at Baylor, the Baylor College of Medicine, uh, where I work with outstanding residents. And then I do full-time community practice. Um, I also started out um, with a big, one of the big corporate, corporate groups um, in Houston. And uh, I tried it out. And uh, you know, for things I like to do, really working abroad, global health projects, um, it was just difficult to work into my schedule on top of doing stuff at Baylor. And so I started doing a little locums and, um, then I just kind of branched out. So now I work all over Texas, which has been really wonderful from kind of rural parts, military bases to border towns where you're really in the true sense of emergency position, um, out to New Mexico and Arizona. And, uh, I go up to Vermont, um, once in a while, just cause Vermont is absolutely gorgeous and a great place to work. Um, and yeah, I've been really happy doing it for, for a couple of years now. Let's start off. What are some of the um, strengths? I mean, I, I think a lot of people look at locums and, you know, you think about the opportunity to see new places. The money a lot of times is, seems to be pretty good. But what are some of the big attractions to doing that, uh, to, um, some, to getting into the locums type environment and, those, and, and pulling up those types of shifts? Sure. I, I think that ver- I think that variability is what we go into emergency medicine in the first place for. We like changes. We like we don't like the same thing over and over again. I think work as a locum's doctor really speaks to that. Uh, when I got out of my uh, when I trained and I started work, I had no clue whether I wanted to stay in academics, whether I wanted to do rural medicine, um, and I wanted to try it all. And 
I still don't know what I want to do, which is great. I think that's why we're your docs, because we like not knowing that much. Uh, so I, I think this kind of, you know, ability to really jump into any different uh, place, of, you know, different types of practice settings is what make us who we are. And um, so for, for me, that's a huge, huge thing. I don't like to, I like to pick and choose when I'm working. I don't like to be told when to work. I don't like to work any weekends anymore. I did it for years and years and years. Now I don't have to work anymore. Um, and uh, if I want time off, I have time, time off. And I love seeing the country. I love, I love uh, going to places that I've never been before. And uh, this really allows me to do that. Ooh, this is a complicated question. Um, I would say to begin with, you know, emergency medicine is changing a lot in good ways and in not good ways. And one thing which is an elephant in the room is metrics and metrics are everywhere. And a lot of times those are in are related to kind of best patient care. And sometimes it's not, but the fact that I can work in emergency rooms and focus number one, two, and three on patient care, if I have to keep a patient longer, shorter, if I'm stuck in the ICU running codes, it's always about patient care, good documentation, and follow-up. And I feel very liberated in that sense. And if I have an issue with the hospital that doesn't meet those standards that I want to achieve as an emergency physician, I don't have to go back. And that alone, to me, is one of the best parts about being locums. Um, on top of which, seeing different parts of the country, meeting new physicians, seeing how practice models change in different parts in different states. Um, and also scheduling for me. I think burnout is another big um, thing we you should talk about more in our specialty because it's real. And whenever I start feeling like I'm just burning out or getting tired, um, I just kind of dial down my shifts yeah. and take some time off, some time with family. Um, and so, yeah, those have been my biggest selling points about doing it, seeing different practice models, parts of the country, and feeling really kind of in control of my practice and um, kind of working solo with, for yourself and not having to work for kind of a big, a big corporation um, that, you know, doesn't really may not may or may not meet the standards that you uphold for being a physician. So I completely agree that, you know, hearing about the um, that variability, um, you talked about it with uh, um, with the emergency medicine in itself is um, enjoying the variability and the and a little bit of chaos and not wanting to see the same thing over and over and over again. That's really why I chose emergency medicine is because I wanted the variability. I found that uh, I find I found a lot of areas of medicine very interesting, but I also found myself after the two months of rotations getting very bored uh, because, oh my gosh, it's uh, another one of these or another this. And whereas in emergency medicine, we were allowed to, um, you know, you never know what's going to pop through that door. You never know what's coming up. So every day is a little bit um, a little bit uh, uh, different than the one before. Let's look at some of the drawbacks. What is? What are some of the things that um, that may say? You know, if you're thinking about getting into uh, locums type work, what are some of the things you need to consider? Because it may be, you know, a little bit different. And I assume one of them is going to be, you know, that onboarding of a new facility that you're going into. Um, you know, that process. There is something about being comfortable with the. EMRs and the settings and the nurses and the flow and all of that stuff. What are some of those drawbacks that 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 uh, that uh, you you find? Yeah, they're definitely there. Um, things like EMRs and new facilities. I feel it's kind of like a language. I feel like once you learn a language or two, they kind of all flow together. And after you work at so many ERs, you kind of get the flow of how most all of them operate. I work with about I don't know, like eight different EMRs now, and after you go through a few, they're actually not as bad, but that is challenging going into settings where you're not going there regularly every day. Um, when I used to be on staff, I kind of liked seeing the same faces all the time, so that was something new. Um, travel can definitely get on you a little bit, um, having to travel, um, but again, you travel for getting the schedule um, and the days that you want to work. Um, those have really been my two biggest falls, and you know, some places, because you are locums, they may not need you. They may not have availability then because they're fully staffed up. And that's just a reality of, of, you know, what the service you're providing. Um, those have been the main things I've kind of had to deal with. Um, I, um, get a lot of people asking me about, um, you know, how much you make as a locum's doctor. And I think one of the big things that we, we do deal with is there is a month to month, uh, variability word again, 
as to how much you actually make. I mean, there's there there, yeah. there will be uh, you know month to month fluctuation. Um, so, uh, but I found that if you know where you're working, you know your shifts, you can that fluctuation of what you're making every month is 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 in a quite small range. Uh, the, the other thing that people ask me is that well, you're not getting any benefits. Um, I you know I think that's a biggie. Um, I have a wife now who has the benefits, so it's a, it's great. Uh, uh, but uh, you know you can plan well for that. I think it's 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 not hard to plan well for your benefits, so you can save on your own. You don't need a four hundred one k through your employer. Uh, you know health benefits are you know, easy to get as well. So um, I don't see that as a huge negative, but it but it definitely is. I mean, if you have a huge you know if you have five kids, then you know it's uh, something definitely to think about. Let's talk about some of those considerations, because I assume that some of these facilities that are needing locum stocks are going to be just train wrecks. They're going to be places where they're not able to keep their staff because it's either a hideous location or just a crappy situation. So that malignant administrative process. What are the things you look for when you start to look at these positions? How can you fluff them out to make sure that you're not going to go somewhere? And I understand you you don't have to stay there. I mean, you can come off that schedule, say we're going to work there for a couple of weeks or whatnot, and then say, okay, I'm not coming back here because this is, this is junk. How do you look at that? And are there ways to screen these facilities to, to get an idea before you go in there that it's going to be an actual decent environment as opposed to the reason we need locums is because we've run everybody else off and, and make people hate us? I, I usually talk to, to the director first uh, prior to uh, most of my gigs um, and you can you can keenly tell by how that person is actually presenting the job what kind of job it's, it's going to be if, if he, he's offering you the moon it's a fantastic place you got to work here you see so many patients it's going to be wonderful for you I always take a little bit of a grain of salt you know take his words with a little bit of a grain of salt um, but other than chatting with some of the doctors there which I don't always do when I go to a new place uh, that first shift is everything I mean, I think we have the ability, you know, we work in the yard to tell in the first, you know, hour what kind of place this is. You know, whether you're going to have the, uh, you know, uh, nursing support, whether you're going to have the you know, support of other staff. So I can glean that pretty fast, but you are doing a shift while you're actually doing that. I, I rarely, I've worked in multiple places, I rarely have not finished my three or four shifts that I, I was planning to 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 do because I didn't like the first shift. There's been one case in which I didn't, uh, but all the other cases I, I can usually stay through what I'm supposed to work. Um, and I haven't been thrown a curveball that much, so I can usually tell going in what kind of place this is, this is going to be. Only once or twice I came out of there saying this is clearly not what I expected this to be. You know, it sounds crazy, but one thing I look at is the EMR they have. If the hospital is willing to invest in a high-quality EMR, to me, that often shows how much they value the hospital, patient care, and the emergency department. And that's not completely true in all cases, but when I find they're not invested, they're invested in a cumbersome EMR that I know they're using because it saves money. It's oftentimes, it reflects the hospital <laughs> itself in the emergency room. Um, I also talk to the medical director, and I always uh, ask to speak to physicians that work there and ask them for their opinion, what they, what they like about it, what they don't like about it. And I've worked at a lot, I mean, over 15 or some odd ERs now, and I actually haven't had any train wrecks that I've come across. I'm sure they're out there. Um, but uh, And there's a couple of hospitals I've been presented with where I talked to the physician, and they were pretty candid. I feel like EM colleagues are pretty candid with each other. We all want the best for each other. And they were like, look, I'm actually leaving here, so maybe it's not best you come here. Um, but you're right. You kind of stiff out why do they need yeah locums. And often I found it's either staff fluctuations or um, location or groups changing hands and then new policies being enacted that people aren't kosher with. Um, so, but um, yeah, I think feeling it out and talking to people there has been the best way. And I haven't, thankfully, knock on wood, I haven't had any bad experiences yet. There's actually, so, so I've, uh, yeah, I've had some great experiences and I am in a hospital now where I work you know, pretty much almost two to three times a month. I'm there for about two to three days at a time. Um, so most of my uh, learning experiences in new places have, have been good. There has been a train, train wreck, and I think everyone wants to hear what that was. Uh, there was a train wreck in which I went into an emergency department, 
Um, it was small, but it was chaotic. It was uh, being left to me by a doctor who was a part-time internal medicine doctor who didn't know how to run an ER. So there were, there were all these patients waiting to be seen. And <clears throat> I had to round on the inpatients, which I didn't know going, going in. So I had to not only, uh, not only see the ER patients, I had to round on the inpatients and address their needs until the following morning when the on-call doctor was, was uh, going to take over the inpatients. Well, no, so, EMIM, yeah, no, no, it was, no, it's no, not. It's not. Unfortunately, it's not. And uh, we can take care of a patient a day in a hospital. All of us can, all of us can, uh, you know, all of us can order antibiotics and a diet. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there have been some, uh, but they're very few and far between. So you got p- people out there right now that are thinking um, for the potential of getting into locums work. What are those considerations and things people need to do when they want to dip their toe in or, or take a swim in, in the world of locums, inter- uh, locums emergency medicine? I would say just, and I tell my residents this, um, you know, locums isn't for everybody. Um, I think you need to really weigh out the pros and cons of what you want out of your career in emergency medicine. Um, what do you value? Um, and try it out. Um, I would say, you know, try it out a little bit, maybe part time. Try a few gigs, see how you enjoy it. Um, you may not like the travel. You may not like having to learn a new EMR or we're talking about the credentialing process. Um, on the flip side, you may love it. You might like that you can kind of, you know, get focused on patient care, have more autonomy. Um, but I would say, yeah, I would, I would say just try out one or two spots and see how you like it. Um, find locations you'll find desirable. When you do locums, you have flexibility to work at, I like high acuity. I work a lot of border town medicine, um, but you can work in vacation spots that are a little bit nicer, that may be a little lower acuity. And that's one of the great things about the job, this, this variability. I mean, I like, I work at a level one trauma center in Houston, uh, but then I also work on the border town where I see level one trauma, but there's no, there's a general surgeon. That's about it. Um, up to kind of critical access hospitals. And I love the the variability and, and the skill set. So yeah, just just try it out. Try it out part time and see how you like it, and just go from there. You know, probably the biggest thing that I get is that um, uh, when I chat with people about locums, they're like, "Well, I can't do locums. I have a family." Um, so that's probably the biggest thing that I I get. I think everyone feels that it's, it's somewhat of a sexy thing to do, um, but the number one thing that people say that I can't do because I have a family, um, and that's a very valid point. Um, the truth of the matter is uh, you don't have to do exclusive locums. As Rip was saying, you can work locums once a month. You can work locums once a year. And I, I think, so I tell those who feel like they want to do it but they can't do it, you know, have it in your wheelhouse. You know, apply to a company. You know, have your <clears throat> name out there so that if there's a job that you want to do or if there's a state that you want to go to, that you can always do it. And um, so it doesn't have to be something that you do only. And you could do it very occasionally if you want to as well. I do love that idea of the freedom and and being ha- being in more control as in of locum tenancy. I'm only going to do weekdays, or I want to be in these types of locations and um, these sorts of things that you can be more tailor your career as opposed to traditional emergency medicine, where you know it's basically just you having to fill in that schedule. And so you're going to have your share of weekends, holidays, uh, of course nights, and I do all nights myself. But you know th- those sorts of things, being able to tailor your career a little bit better. And we've all gotten calls, um, everybody that's listening here, unless you are you don't have a phone or email or whatnot, have been you're getting these calls. Yeah, what the cold do, call. Yeah, when, the, the cold <laughs> calls of, hey, right. I've got a great opportunity and so-and-so. And it's like, that's interesting. I know that hospital and I wouldn't, <laughs> I wouldn't send my dog there. But, um, and I love my dog. But, the, uh, but, you know, when we're looking at companies, when you want to do locums, you know, yeah, there's all these companies and opportunities out there. What do you look for when you're looking for this company that's going to be that, that middleman or middlewoman when it comes to helping find these sites and find these locations? Or do you go at it, do you consider going at it your own and, and seeing what's out there? Um, you're right. And it's really confusing when I started doing this because you can go through the locums agency, number one. You could go directly with the group. Number two, um, one of the big corporate groups, and a lot of them have their own internal locums. You could go solo and set up your own contracts, cold call, um, number three. So there's tons of ways you can do it, and there are pros and cons to each one. I tell you know, my residents I work with, start out with the locums agency. 
Um, they're kind of going to show you the ropes, how things work. And um, I've had good experiences. You know, I haven't had any bad experiences with any of my the agencies I work with. Um, sometimes when they're a little bit bigger, they have more resources and they have very established relationships at the hospitals. Um, so two places I work in Texas and New Mexico, they've been there for a very long time. Excellent relationships with everybody. And uh, they really kind of buffer you from the hospital and not, you know, I'm not really somebody that wants to get involved in administration. I don't want to get involved in the politics. I just want to do my job and get better at it. Um, and they will take care of that stuff for you. So that's been my, but even the smaller shops, you get a little more personalized attention with them. But I haven't had anything negative with either one. Um, but again, I would ask them their relationship with the hospitals. How long have they been a client of yours? Is this a new contract? Why does the contract exist? And then if you end up doing it more, exploring um, the options. And I was going to say really briefly on that travel thing. You know, now that I've been traveling for like two years now between working abroad and locums, everybody travels. My brother-in-law does business, and he travels like four or five days a week. So we are luxury. We have the luxury as physicians to not travel, but that doesn't mean you can't travel. And you get a lot of benefits with it. But as I fly through airports, like, what was that movie, Up in the Air with George Clooney? Yeah, I'm not George Clooney. I wish I was. But anyway, everybody travels for their job. It's, it's insane. So it's not totally crazy to make your job have travel in it. So anyway. Have you guys ever uh, <clears throat> rented a car from Enterprise? So everyone that's, that's you know, hired there are just recent college graduates. So I consider a lot of call calls that I get. Uh, I hang up on those that are the recent college graduates who are chatting with you about emergency medicine. We've all gotten these calls. Yeah, uh, yeah we can offer that. I'm not, I don't want to work for less than 250 an hour. Oh, we can offer that. I want to work uh, only day shifts, and I want to work on... Oh, we can offer that. Hold on, so, I'm getting a call right now. Hold on, I'm just going to go <laughs> There you go. <laughs> 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 just say no. Uh, so, yeah, so I get a lot of calls in which uh, the person on the other end doesn't really know what they're, you know, they, they think they know everything, but they know nothing. And so those are the calls that I don't take. Um, you know, uh, pretty much everyone else, uh, all other, you know, all the other locums, companies have the same bent and they all do the same thing for, for you. I'd go with a bigger company. Uh, I just, uh, and yeah, I go with one who's been doing it for a long, long, long time. It just makes sense. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's, the cold, it's the cold call that can really kill you. I actually have a, a friend of mine that I work with when I'm down in Alabama who does, um, he's purely, um, he purely does locums work, and he, he works with a couple of different companies, a couple of few different companies to get the cl- locations and sites that he's looking for and the things that are interesting to him and where he wants to be. And what's crazy and what's great is he'll plan his shifts based on needing to be in that area for something else. So he comes down to Alabama uh, to work where we work. Uh, that's outside the purview of typical emergency medicine. And he'll do some shifts around there, you know, work at that hospital. Or he wants to, family wants to go down to Florida, you know, for a couple of weeks or, or yeah. longer. And he'll work some shifts down there while he's there. And then, you know, and use, use that to basically be, you know, your own traveling road show. Where you know wherever you cool place you want to go, you do some shifts there to make some money, pay the bills, and you know, and to make sure you're keeping the coffers filled. But at the same time, being able to do these cool things, and that is one of the options with the families, especially, uh, especially if you're they're fresh out and you've got young families that aren't in school yet, yeah. is that ability to travel around and and do some things and see places and live in different places because that's I think that's one of the nice things that would be awesome is to be able to expose your children to different areas, different fields, different communities, different ways of looking at things. Because so many people grow up and stay in one place their entire life. And that's the entire frame of the picture for which you, um, for which you place the world in. And so the ability to travel and see different places, you know, that's one thing that's cool about Europe is everybody's so mobile. Everybody moves and goes to other countries and sees other countries and learns other cultures. Or in the United States, you know, growing up in East Tennessee for 20 years, there's a lot of people who never left the state. And we lived 30 minutes from two other states. And so they never traveled more than 30 minutes from their home, you know, in, in that area. So you have a very narrow gauge on the world. And that's, you know, that's going down a rabbit hole with this, but a, a, a perk to locums. And I think a great addition and option for emergency medicine and I think that's one thing we support and think is pretty cool is the options that we have to tailor your life and your practice to what you want to do and to 
B and C and work and experience the different things you want to experience. How can folks uh, get in touch with you guys uh, either via uh, email or social web if they've uh, got any further questions? Um, I mean, anybody can email me directly. Um, um, just my first name, R-I-P-A-L, middle initial H, uh, last name P-A-T-E-L, and then number one at uh, gmail.com. I think Munder was on GQ last month, so you can probably find his expose there. <laughs> page, page 340. Uh, yeah, I can be found at Yo Mid- I play craps a lot. I can be found at Yo Midnight, Y-O Midnight at gmail.com. And my name is spelled M-A-N-D-A-A-R, Mandar. The last name is Gokhale, G-O-K-H-A-L-E. But yeah, you can Y-O Midnight at gmail.com. I do a lot of uh, rural places, so anyone out there who wants to talk about rural medicine, um, I've been doing it for a while. All right, Dr. Gokhale and Dr. Patel, thank you so much for your time. Uh, Great information about the world of locums and uh, good information for those out there that are still trying to feel out, uh, especially the resident base who want to figure out what they want to do with their lives as they move forward. As for me, you can contact me, youreverydaymedicine at gmail.com, youreverydaymedicine at gmail.com, as well as at everydaymed on Twitter. Also, I encourage you to make sure you're subscribed to our podcast, either via the SoundCloud or the iTunes, to make sure that you're getting each weekly release of the program. And until next time, I'm Dr. Ryan Stanton, and this has been some ASAP Frontline. This episode of ASAP Frontline is supported by locumstory.com.